basketball. From Cameron Indoor Stadium in Durham, North Carolina, it's ACC action between the NC State Wolfpack and the eighth-ranked Blue Devils of Duke. Welcome to Cameron Indoor Stadium, the home of the Duke Blue Devils. More than 9,000 fans on hand. Abdel Nabi and D'Amico will jump center for Duke and NC State, respectively. Bobby Hurley with a ball to Christian Leitner. Duke bucket offensive foul. Let's see if it's overruled. Sam Croft with the call. Mike calls the offensive foul on a drive. The penetration by Henderson. Hurley and Corciani matching up in the backcourt. Gugliotta looked inside for D'Amico. What an improved, what an improved player Gugliotta is. He's been sensational this year and only got a chance to play because Avi Lester was academically ineligible. There's Monroe, the best three-point shooter in the conference and one of the best in the country. One of the real premier second guards in the nation. He's a true second guard, a scorer. Bank it up, wouldn't go for him. Leitner with a loose ball to Hurley. He's going to give it to Henderson. And he double clutched the pass and threw it away. Should have given it up just a little bit earlier. Bob Hurley certainly one of the nicer dandies. Here's a look at Chris Corciani and Jimmy Balvano. Ball touched by NC State out of bounds to Duke. Leitner hits it. That's what makes him so special, Mike. His ability to play on a perimeter as well as on the interior. It's a two-pointer, and Duke has the lead. What a classical matchup. Two great point guards, Hurley and Corciani. Nice bounce pass, but D'Amico couldn't handle it. Monroe put up with a left hand, and Abdel Nabi comes out with it. Not really a good shot by Rodney Monroe. Really poor staff shot. Quickly ahead to Leitner. He's become a real take-charge player lately. And a reach-in foul. He's their number one option on the baseline out of Danny Ferry's playing over in Italy. Gugliotta picked up the personal. Gugliotta, his first team's first. Alvano really working the sideline. Non-shooting foul, so it's Duke's basketball. Abdel Nabi checked by D'Amico, lost it on the way up. He had the flu yesterday, Mike. He didn't practice. Uh, he was at practice, but did not work out. I feel he feels a little better tonight. D'Amico drops it to Howard. Has really come on lately, but Gugliotta has the offensive rebound. He's clobbered by Abdel Nabi and then blocked from behind by Laker. Let's see if it's Abdel Nabi who gets the foul. Gugliotta is a real tough, tenacious player on that inside. to the free throw line nearly a 70 percent free throw shooter he really didn't look good on that free throw he really struggled shooting that rock 18 12 to go first half two nothing do and good way out of missed them both henderson with a long rebound he's a good player right there in those two attempts Hurley, who's had one bad outing this year, that was at North Carolina. Well, Keith Rice really got the better of that one, but there's Hurley with the drive down the lane. That's the way Bobby Hurley can play. He loves to drive. Any kind of angle that you give him, he'll take that and penetrate. Here's Corciani. He'll have the ball in his hands 80% of the time on offense. Monroe. He's 0 for 3, and none have looked real good. I'll tell you, he's 0 for 3. Hasn't taken a good shot yet, but you know what, Mike? He's going to keep on firing, baby. He's one of those shooters who just keeps shooting, shooting, and shooting. Hurley to Leitner couldn't handle it, but it's out of bounds off North Carolina State. And if you're Jimmy Valvano, you want him to continue shooting. That guy's a born scorer. One of those rare combinations, Dick. He's a shooter and a scorer. He's got the pure form, but when he can't get that open shot, he can create it. 
Holding foul away from the ball. Gugliotta will pick up his second personal in the first minute 30. And they don't have much depth up front. They can ill afford to have somebody in foul trouble, especially Gugliotta. Henderson for three. Gugliotta with a rebound. We want to welcome everybody who was watching Big East basketball before our game here in the ACC. Duke leading North Carolina State 4 0. Gugliotta tries to get down the lane. Followed by Leitner before he can make his move. I think for the people out there, they're going to see an interesting matchup in the backcourt. As we look at Mike Krzyzewski, we got two outstanding point guards, the young Bob Hurley going head to head with the experienced Chris Corciani. And then Corciani has a little help in the backcourt from a guy by the name of Mr. Rodney Monroe, a board scorer. D'Amico, nice drive past Abdel Nabi and gets the first NC State field goal. They've been getting a lot of good play out of D'Amico and Kukuyama. shoot the basketball and play some solid defense. And a guy who has been hot, Dick, of late. And from outside, he's the number two long-range shooter in the conference. Nice job to get the ball to an open Rodney Monroe, and it's 6-4, Duke by a pair. That's the first high percentage shot he's had. He missed his first three. It was Brick City where he forced three. Leitner comes up with a loose ball. Banked it home. Christian Leitner. Christian Leitner hit an opening jump shot from the perimeter, and he demonstrates his ability to play on the interior as well as on the exterior. If you're wondering about Robert Bricky, I talked to him before the game. He said the doctors cleared him to run starting today. He could be back in a week or ten days. I saw him shooting the ball yesterday in practice. He had some mobility. There's a bump and a foul by Kubek. Greg Kubek will pick up the personal. His first, the foul third on, on Duke's team. Kubek has really given him some QT quality That's time replacing Robert Bricky. He had the bad outing against North Carolina. As we look at Robert Bricky sitting on the sideline, the high jumper, the acrobatic guy. He's a guy that gives him athletic ability, Mike, when he's on the floor. 8-4 Duke, 16-10 to go. Abdel Nabi comes out for the first time. Mike Krzyzewski with the advantage as far as depth. Hey, I'll tell you one thing as we look at how Abdel Nabi had the flu yesterday at practice. Hey, Mike, I'm angry. I'm angry. You and I work like crazy all day. We rehearse, we get our openings, and we never get a chance to get any air time. I'll tell you one thing, they're going to put a new rule. Only two fouls in the first half. I mean, two timeouts in the first half and two timeouts in the second half to let the kids play and eliminate all these TOs, baby, at the end of a game. I like that. The game's getting out of hand, isn't it? Well, make it like the international rule. You don't accumulate timeouts. Corciani against Hurley. He can score. Hey, Corciani has orders from Jimmy Valvano. Shoot, Chrissy, shoot. Shoot, Chrissy, shoot. He's not looking at the basket enough to try to shoot the basketball. He's the leading scorer all time in the state of Florida. Great side and Brian Davis inserted into the lineup gets his first bucket. That was an excellent look diagonally and found the defense really nappy. Monroe for three. Well, Gugliotta got away with one there. Cracked into Hurley and got the rebound. Gugliotta's really made himself a player. Howard. And look at Leitner working the glass. Here comes Hurley. He's got a four on two. Basket counts and Excellent job by Hurley as all the zanies go bananas and Jimmy Valvano certainly doesn't like it. But here comes Hurley. Look at the excellent decision. He draws Corciani to him and there is Henderson who creates the foul with squaring his body to the baseline. Henderson has four. Tiamico is out of the NC State lineup. Number 42, Kevin Thompson is in for the first time. And number 34, Brian Feggins. Also comes in the other big freshman that they have. Megan's is 6'6. Six, six. Thompson is 6'9. And Howard will get a breather for Jim Valvano. Well, Jimmy thought he had Avi Lester for the year, but then they lost Lester academically ineligible. In fact, he may have lost an entire year by playing just in that marathon game. There's a timeout with 15.09 to go first half. It's been all Duke. They're on top of NC State. 13-6. This time, it's war. Duke with the early lead on North Carolina State, 13-6. They got an early lead, Mike, but if North Carolina State is going to get back in this game, the way it has to happen is through the magical 
productivity of their backcourt. Production is the byword. Corciani and Monroe really are so balanced from this standpoint. Corciani is the true point guard, and Monroe is the scorer. You take a look here at their point production, and you look at the numbers, and it tells the whole story of the North Carolina State offense. You look at the other backcourt, Hurley has had three assists, and Henderson five points already for Duke. Hurley made a great decision, giving up that basketball at the right time to Henderson. Henderson checking Monroe. Tough guy to stay with. Another double clutch. He got this for Monroe. He's going to have a big night. He's just absolutely a born scorer, Mike. He knows how to score, and it doesn't bother him if he misses two or three shots. He has four of NC State's eight points. Leitner is held by Kevin Thompson, the freshman out of Winston-Salem. That's one on him. Fourth team foul, Gugliotta already has two, the starting forward for North Carolina State. Malvano's got to be really concerned with the post-defensive ability of his young people because I don't believe Thompson can check Leitner down in the boxes. Henderson was short on the three. Here's Portiani. He plays with a lot of emotion, this kid with the basketball. A lot of people thought he was too slow for big-time basketball. He may be the all-time leader in assist before his career is over. Shot was short, but that's because there was a foul called on Thomas Hill, the freshman out of Lancaster, Fouls Texas. He's getting a lot of playing time. Remember you and I had the North Carolina game, and he came in, and it looked like it was garbage time, and he played exceptionally well. Well, he was rewarded for that effort and got a lot of playing time against Wake Forest, played really well, and he's really become now, he's moved up into their rotation. Here's a guy who's getting some more time, Mickey Hinnant, the senior out of Rye. Well, he better get time because there ain't going to be no more time with the Intramural League, maybe, when it's all over. <laughs> They're very thin at guard. Hinnon is the only guy they can bring in. A lot of times they'll bring him in and go with a three-guard offense. He's a JC player. Made one out of two. It's 13-9 Blue Devils, and they have the basketball. I love watching these two go head-to-head. -head. Corciani and Hurley. You're seeing really two guys that know how to play basketball. Leitner being guarded by Thompson, and boy, Leitner has really turned into an offensive star. He can pass the ball really well also. Duke likes to drive the gap. See that, how they drive the gap? They love driving gaps. We talked about that today, Mike. Great shot by Henderson, better than a 50% shooter on the season. He has six, and the lead is back to six. They really recognize the seam of the defense and attack the seam constantly. Fagans to Monroe. Gianni for three. He can stick it. Missed that one. Fagans, nice rebound. And then a brick on the follow shot. But Thompson got it back and gives to Hinnon. Fagans did a good job getting that rebound. That was a big lead rebound. Gianni missed his first perimeter shot. And he's really been very hesitant in his previous games once he missed a couple of from the outside. Fagans blocked from behind by Davis. Leitner has the ball. What a pass to Davis. And he kicks it. Saved it, but NC State comes out with Hinnant to Corciani. It's a three on two. Hinnant, good job to keep the dribble alive. Hinnant's a versatile player. And he bounced it off a good player. I really like playing three guards. Jimmy Balbano walks over, taps him on a two. That's a nice play. Been a tough year for Jimmy Balbano with the book, personal fouls, and all the other the NCAA probation. But he's a survivor, Michael. He's a survivor. Tiamico and Howard are back in for Valvano in the NC State lineup. They're down by six with 12.50 to go first half. Bad pass, but Hinnon, not the man it was intended for, ends up with a free shot. Well, he's got good athletic ability, rotates along the baseline, comes up with a loose ball, converts. So you notice how Corciani will try to back away from Hurley. Abdel Nabi is back in for Duke, as is Kubak. Abdel Nabi double team. McCaffrey, good shooter. Yeah, he likes to shoot the rock. He's going to be a real solid player. He's a good guard coming off the bench. He gives him flexibility, and that he can play either the one slot or the two. Pennsylvania Player of the Year a season ago, and Corciani goes for the tough bounce pass. It doesn't work. This guy can work the sideline, and he knows how to coach guards. Remember 1983 with Lowe and Wittenberg as they cut down the nets and won the national championship in Albuquerque? with four points in a hurry off the bench. It's 1911. Very poor job defensively. Jimmy would have to be very disappointed in the effort defensively. No one rotated over to give any kind of help on a penetration by McCaffrey. 
Hinnett runs around the screen. So does Monroe. Hinnett will try to take it in. Blocked by Hill. He can get up, Dick. Yeah, he really is getting some playing time because of his defensive effort. Mike Krzyzewski just loves his attitude. And they are playing like this without their best athlete, the injured Robert Bricky. St. John's tries to avenge an early season loss to Syracuse. Then Iowa faces Illinois. It's all part of a Big Monday triple header at 7.30 Eastern, live on ESPN. Last night at one of the fraternity houses, they had a Dick Vitale sound-alike contest. Here are the guys that tied. You know, I, talk about I talk about McCaffrey, I talk about Cochiani, I talk about all these backcourts. But when it comes to backstabbers, baby, Brutus and Anthony. It's going to be an explosive offensive night tonight. We got the dynamic guard duo, Rodney Monroe. Showtime, baby. The second young man, whose nickname is A-Train, was the winner <laughs> in a Vital off, I guess. I tell you, it was a lot of fun last night at the fraternity. A bunch of beautiful kids here on campus. Corciani, what a drive. Great hanging drive by Corciani. Spots a gap in the defense, suspends his body, and hangs and delivers the deuce. He is working on so many school and ACC records, assists, steals. Here's Henderson and Monroe after it. Henderson saved it, tossed it back in. Picked up by Monroe. What a job to get it to Corciani for the open jumper. He's really pressing on his shot. Mike, he's really pressing and not getting the good rotation and follow through. NC State has gotten a lot of loose balls so far tonight. They're really hustling. Corciani's only shooting 37% in the ACC, 39% for the season. Yeah, he's had a tough time from the field. Offensive foul, Corciani. Last year, he shot 50%. In fact, his first two years, he shot 50%. I believe he's hesitating on his shot. 11 minutes to go. First half, Duke leading North Carolina State 19-13. Mike Patrick and Dick Vitale with you. Always Glad special. you could join us for the ACC. Isn't it special? Dude? It's always special down at Tobacco Road, Mike. It's always a special environment for basketball. They refurbished Cameron Indoor Stadium a year ago. It really looks pretty, and they maintain the atmosphere. It's a great place for college basketball. Curly to Henderson, quick turnaround jumper. He's got the stroke the last 10 games. Well, he comes off a little curl move, pops out to the basketball. No one really defends him, and he has the wide open J. Henderson already with nine. Monroe tries the same thing, misses. Henderson rebound. Looks like we're going to have a shootout between Henderson and Monroe here. Henderson wants some respect. He doesn't get enough publicity. What a pass! Oh, yes! Oh! Oh, awesome, baby! Henderson behind the back. Abdel Nabi in stride. The lead's at 10. He says, give me a little respect, baby. Duke is lighting it up at home. McCaffrey on Monroe. They get it to Howard. Howard's really been contained. They need some point production out of Howard. Portiani for three, won't go. D'Amico keeps it alive. Good job by the big man. D'Amico, the big horse inside. Hey, D'Amico, Gugliotti, Portiani, Valvano. It sounds like an Italian construction company. Abdel Nabi called for pushing off underneath. That's how he got free of D'Amico. That's his second. Abdel Nabi has really improved, and that's why Duke is number eight in the nation. He has really given him some excellent baseline play. Now, take a look at his showtime. He says, give me some respect. Come on, baby. Around my back, draws the defense. Oh, that was one beautiful play. That was a la the Coos, the magic man. Johnny Gorgeous Stockton. play. NC State down by eight. Corciani with the basketball. Being checked by Hurley. And a bad pass. They really have no rhythm right now offensively. Jimmy a little frustrated. Corciani told me before the game, he says, isn't this a great place to play? Yeah, he really loves it. He calls this a big, big game. Gets excited coming down here. Three-second call on Abdel Nabi, another turnover. So Duke, which had all the momentum going its way, has had a couple of bad plays the last two possessions. Duke, six turnovers. NC State four. Duke is forcing 22 turnovers a game. Valvano oh, rush your defense. Valvano oh, really has a limited front court. Abdel Nabi swats it away from Gugliano. It's amazing they've done as well with the backcourt. Shows you the importance of backcourt play in collegiate and college basketball. 
Gugliotta telegraphed his move, and Abdel Nabi got the message early. Gugliotta was MVP of the Tournament of Champions out of Charlotte, and that featured guys like Byron Houston of Oklahoma State, Brian Shorter of Pittsburgh, Rodney Monroe. He's been their savior up front, Dick. He Brian really has been a number player. Davis back in. Abdel Nabi will go out with two personal fouls and 9-14 on the clock. Lose a lot of size with that substitution. Gain quickness, give up size. for Gugliotta, then makes a bad pass, saved by Howard. Nice matchup right here, Henderson on Monroe, trying to take the one-on-one. -on -one. Nice fake. Whistle, no basket, but the foul on Henderson. Really utilizes that head fake Bill exceptionally Powell, well. Number three, Bill Henderson, his second. That is the second foul on Phil Eight Henderson. Seven. Here's for you young kids, look at the head fake. See what he does, he gets the head fake, and oh, Henderson leaves something on the floor. And it doesn't belong to me. McCaffrey like back in the game. Henderson will go out. So Duke working on foul trouble. Right They've already committed 17 right fouls. North Carolina four. State only five. I think Duke got really a lucky break when Henderson decided to come back to school. There was strong talk with a transfer. And if he transferred, it would have forced the backcourt to be so young with McCaffrey and Hurley. And I don't believe there's any way they're top ten in America. Henderson sensational, or excuse me, Monroe, sensational free throw shooter. 83%, fifth in the ACC. Scored over 3,000 points in his high school career. In fact, you talk about Monroe and Porciani together, over 6,000 points in their high school careers. 23-17, they've cut the lead to six. Off of Porciani and then maybe Monroe even, and out of bounds to Duke. Porciani had a lot of kind words for Bob Hurley in the local papers today. He said, I really watched a lot of film and I respect his game immensely. Leitner for three. Davis coming away from two North Carolina State players. And then draws the foul. I'll tell you why Duke is becoming a better and better basketball team. There's the development of role players like the Hills and like the Davises, guys that start to contribute and become a part of the team. And Mike Krzyzewski constantly stresses the team concept at every practice session. Brian, Davis, number 23. Brian Howard picked up the personal. It's his second. So really, Howard and Gugliotta both have two. I really like Howard, and yet tonight we haven't seen Brian Howard give up the kind of production they're expecting. Davis, a very good defensive player out of Capitol Heights, Maryland, has three points early in this game. And of course, Mike Krzyzewski likes good defensive player. Well, he believes he set the tone with your team defense. You take a look right here in that matchup. Defensively trying to come and deny on the wings. Go to center trying to deny. Try to pressure the basketball. There's the screen. They step out. They call that hedging. They actually switched to that rotation. Gugliotta for three. Hustles after his own rebound. Saved it. Oh, great job. And Monroe for three. He doesn't miss that many. Gugliotta gets it back. Gugliotta really has a nose for the ball. Seems to be always around the basketball. Davis and Gugliotta slapping. Oh, nice other. screen. And Gugliotta, after all that hard work, gets a well-earned basket. He really deserved it. He made an excellent move coming off the screen. Good penetration. Good execution out of the half-court game designed by Jimmy Davis. Oh, Great nice pass job. to Davis from McCaffrey. Missed the shot with the tip by Laker, and then he's fouled by Monroe. They're so unselfish offensively, always looking for the high-percentage shot. Oh, this guy was one heck of a guard. I'll tell you, when he played at Rutgers with Bobby Lloyd, went to the NIT, lost to a team, the Salukis, with Walter Clyde Frazier. Southern Illinois. It's a great nickname, isn't it? The Salukis. 7.50 to go in the half, six-point lead. Leitner, who has developed into an all-around star for the Blue Devils. An excellent free throw to number, uh, number one in the conference, despite that miss. Four points on the night for Lakers. I like his versatility. I like his ability to go inside and outside. 7.50 to go. First half of play from Durham. It's 26, NC State 19. The student lottery sign up for tickets to the... Gugliotta made an excellent play here. Came off the screen, popped out to the wing. Chris finds him, Porciani. Good head fake, drives the lane, 
Duke switches a little bit late defensively, and he converts it. He came from the same high school, Whitman High School, out in Huntington Station, New York, by a guy that just went to the deck in boxing by the name of Mr. Cooney, who's gone to the sideline, Gerald Cooney, also from that high school. The guy that was the editor of my book, Jeff Newman, and he also was the editor of the book by John Feinstein, the Duke graduate, Bobby Knight's book. In fact, Feinstein's come out with another fine book now, all about Duke basketball. I tell you what, somebody who's made a career out of working with you and Feinstein deserves a lot of credit in my book. Jeff Newman is second special. Excellent, excellent editor. Field goal shooting, North Carolina State 35%. Duke just under 70. They really put a lot of pressure on the ball, Duke. They're playing excellent team defense. Somehow, North Carolina State's got to get some production out of Brian Howard. And it hasn't happened yet tonight. Monroe isolated on Henderson. There's Howard. Dumps it to D'Amico against Leitner, just backed away. He's got two fouls. That was an excellent D'Amico. play. They really rotated the ball high, low. Got it down to D'Amico, utilized his big, strong body. D'Amico has six. The lead is cut to five. Go back to Leitner. Too easy, Mike. Give the ball in too easy. Can't allow him to get the ball that deep. Oh, they run the ball out of the other way. Quigliata shows he can run up and down the floor. He has really become a solid college player on that baseline. Quigliata has four. It's 28-23. Leitner trying to get around Diamico. Sets up up the baseline jumper and Diamico with a rebound. Diamico, a real wide body. Looks a little fatigued right now. Looks a little tired going up and down that floor. He's having a pretty good game. Corciani trying to penetrate and kick it back out. D'Amico will try a pull-up jumper, and he hit it. I'll tell you one thing, you're right, Mike. He is really converting, picking up the score and slap. And there's Dalvano signaling a defensive change. Brian D'Amico averages 6.9 points a game, has eight in the first half. Curley trying to spin move, stripped by Monroe, but Duke gets it back. North Carolina State utilizes multiple defenses. Jimmy likes to change constantly. Leitner with a miss, but Leitner gets the follow. And that last steal wasn't by Monroe, it was by Howard. Leitner so effective on the interior, getting the ball into him very, very easy. Leitner now with nine points. He's averaged 19-4 in his ACC game so far this year. 30-25, Duke by five. Gugliotta. Nice touch. I'll tell you what, the Gugliotta's not playing because he eats lasagna and linguine and his name ends in A-E-I-O-U. He's playing because he's a producer. 30-27, and NC State keeping it close here in front of a sellout crowd at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Well, they've had better execution in their last three possessions. They've really got great shots against the Duke defense. Kubek, nice fake, then tried to get it to Leitner and lost it. Showed some good poise on the offensive end. Howard to D'Amico, and D'Amico hits inside. I'd get a timeout if I was Mike, because they're beating him up the floor, Mike. They're running the ball up the floor and beating him down to court for a layup, and Valvano's got to love it. D'Amico's career high is 12 points. He has 10 in the first half, and NC State has cut the lead to one. There's no snow on our forecast today. Mercedes-Benz introduces Formatic. Outwitting the weather and the road with the most advanced all-wheel drive system ever put in a car. Formatic. It may just obsolete other all-wheel drive systems. Not to mention weather forecasts. A special report, one-on-one -on -one with one of Payne Weber's top executives. Here is Ed Kirshner with an outlook for the 90s. As we begin the 90s... From the Vital Dictionary, point guard, he thinks pass first. He's trying to get it to his teammates, Dick. Well, they distribute the rock, and there's not too many that do it better than number 13. There he is, kicking the ball up the floor, gets their running game in gear, and they're beating Duke down the floor, out hustling them, out scrapping them, getting the ball up the court. And Corciani loves it. There's a look at an outstanding point guard, always thinking pass. That's what the guards have done so far, pretty even matchup. Of course, Vital's unabridged hoop dictionary not available in the local stores, and with any luck, it never will be. Nobody can understand it. I tell you, Mike, only in America can a guy make a living like I do, and I can't speak English. Henderson hits the runner. He has 11, and it's 32-19. Gugliotta now being checked by Thomas Hill. Lena Caffrey playing Rodney Monroe. 
little different than what he checked in high school. Oh, what a nice look. Great pass by Corciani and a great feed off so Thompson gets the easy layup. Thompson gets the big deuce inside. He's got a wide body, but an excellent backdoor pass. And then the good look by Hinnett. 32-31. Hinnett did a nice unselfish job there. Abdel Nabi in good position. Back to Hurley for three. Abdel Nabi, offensive rebound, knocked away by Corciani. Henderson for three. He's having a big night. Boy, he has the sweet touch now. 14 points for Phil Henderson. Remember, he got in foul trouble early against North Carolina. I don't think even if they had him in that game, because Carolina was brilliant. King Rice was sensational. Dick, Brian D'Amico is having such a great first half. He's not in there now. I think you were right uh, in your comment earlier. He was tired. Yeah, he got a little tired, and Jimmy's giving him a little rest. Gugliotta double pump. He's fouled. He earned that foul along that baseline by double pumping, but it wasn't really foul a good shot. Number 25, Thomas, Thomas Hill, Hill picks up the personal, his second, That's and Gugliotta will go to the free throw line. They tell me Thomas Hill's dad really now is taping all the games as we look at Valvano. Thomas Hill, senior, now an assistant athletic director at Oklahoma. He won a medal in the Olympics in 1972, a tremendous hurdler. The Amico's free throw, or a Gugliata, excuse me, is good. He's nearly a 70% free throw. Now, do you think, hey, Mike, do you think anybody else had a chance to recruit a Gugliata or a De Amico <laughs> when they came in a home and Valvano laid some nice Italian on those parents? He probably had an edge. 35-33, Duke by a pair, 356 in a rapidly moving first half. McCaffrey. Loose ball, Hill comes up with a foul on the way in, and it looked like Hinnant reached in and got it. Hill had 11 points against Wake Forest, gave him a real spark. Hey, you mentioned a team that is struggling, and you look at their lineup, Davey Odom's got to be absolutely going bananas, wondering what's happened to Wake Forest. I think they have really struggled with the change in uh, coaching philosophy on offense. They were a lot more freelance earlier, and Sam Ivey being hurt didn't help them either. They jumped out 6-1, and one, but I believe now they've lost like 9 out of their last 10. Christian Leitner on the bench. Hill at the line. Played well the last two ACC games. Really works hard in practice, too. He's got that great mentality, that toughness. First point for Hill, the freshman out of Lancaster, Texas. Got excellent defensive tendencies. Really anticipates well, pressures the ball exceptionally well, and loves to play on a defensive end. 7-33, Duke back to a four-point lead. They've led all the way. If there's one positive that's happened through the injury of Robert Bricky, they found themselves another player in Thomas Hill. NC State has gotten back into this game by hitting his last seven shots from the floor. And Corciani breaks the streak. Here comes Hurley. McCaffrey had the pull-up jumper, went to Abdel Nabi instead, and he finished it off. Abdel Nabi finalizes. Good look to the trail man in transition. And Lenny Wirtz blows the whistle after the shot as both teams wants to, want to substitute. Duke loves to run. They're averaging 94.2 points a game if they could maintain that. We've got two legends blowing a whistle in this game, Larry Lempo and Lenny Wirtz. If they could maintain that average, it would be the highest in Duke history. Well, oh, there's the nice look to the trail man. McCaffrey passes up the jump shot, gives it to Abdel Nabi for the high percentage shot. Look at the efficiency ratio right here of Duke offensively. Second national unbelievable free throw percentage. The scoring margin. They really do a great job offensively, but a lot of it's dictated off their defense. Exactly. Howard, who has been a non-factor offensively. And that's putting it mildly. You're being nice. Monroe, who hasn't. Where have you been, Brian Howard? Monroe with a lean in, a lot of body contact, no whistle. Kubek with a rebound. Monroe slow getting up. Early to Henderson, nice pass to Leitner, and he'll bring it up. Henderson with a jump hook. Saved by the Wolfpack. They gotta get Howard involved in this game. He's too talented a player to be a non-option in their offense. Howard, who averages 13 points a game, has not scored in this one. He'll check it at number 22. Better than I have the ball. Monroe for three. Got his own rebound. The shooter knows when he's going to miss it. And a shooter knows to keep on shooting the rock. 
he has the green light. Some other guys would shoot the second or third time. They're peeking over at the coach. What is he getting me? Rodney's light is stuck on green. All the time. 39-35, Duke by four if we approach two minutes. Early playing under control, a lot of poise. Played for his dad. So did Porciani play for his dad. Kubek. That's created very, very simply by the little dribble move of Bob Hurley, and Kubek gets the wide open check. Kubek came in with a great reputation as a shooter, struggled his first two years, but he's been a much better shooter this year. I think a lot of kids struggle like Kubek did early because they know if they don't make their first one or two, they're coming right out of the lineup. 41-35, Monroe leans into Henderson. Doesn't get the roll. D'Amico back in there with a the rebound. He's been a real horse, D'Amico. Thompson keeping it alive, but Henderson comes out with the ball. Beat the Leitner. Excuse me, Kubak. Hill with a follow. Henderson tips. And Howard comes out with it. Here comes Corciani. To Monroe. It went. They'll overrule it. Sam Croft waves it off. Alvano says, count it. But that was well before the shot. The foul was on Davis, his first. Well, what a move, though, by Unbelievable. Monroe. 102 to go, first half, six point, Duke lead. Davis will check back in. You know, Al Pluto. Howard's averaging, excuse me, Mike, 17 points a game in the ACC. And as you said, he hasn't scored yet. And has rarely touched the ball in shooting position either. Doesn't look like he's really involved in the game. Monroe with a chance to catch David Thompson as the number one all time scorer in North Carolina State history. You talk about a great, great player in the ACC. You better talk about David Thompson. He was amazing. Well, they won that national championship. Norman Sloan back in 1974. David Monty Cow. David Thompson could outjump anybody I ever saw. Uh, number three, incredible, Nikki, incredible, Hanna, incredible Hanna, athlete. Hanna. A real sad story the way his career has ended. Brian Howard. Monroe at the line. They've cut the lead to five. As Monroe, Monroe hits another one. 41-37. NC State hanging around in the neighborhood. Especially without Howard. You know, once Howard gets involved, they can really be tough. Here. Hurley, what a drive! Hurley matches the drive made a little bit earlier in the game by Corciani when he made his slashing move. He says, you want to play a little horse there, Corciani? You want to go a little horse, H-O-R-S-E? I'm and great at that game. Yeah. NC State trying to take some time off the clock. There's a six-second differential between the shot and the game clock. You're looking at the game clock on your screen, so they can't hold it down to the end. So important offensively in college basketball, even on a defensive end, to have a solid point guard. You said, what does a point guard do? One, he gets the ball to the key people at the right time. Two, he pressures the ball defensively. Shot clock at seven. Monroe leans into a three-pointer and air ball. They should give it five if he converted that one. McCaffrey. Give it up. He said, I'll give it up. I'll put it on the glass. Monroe back the other way, trying at the buzzer and missed. Great play by McCaffrey to get the score. Could have made it a little easier by dumping it off. Some finish for the Blue Devils. They had a big lead, gave most of it back, and now at the half, they lead by eight. Duke 45, NC State 37. Let's go back to our studio and John Saunders. Thanks a lot, Mike. Dick Duke, first place in the ACC and trying to stay there. Tough at home at Cameron Indoor Stadium, one of the wackiest places in all of college basketball. But there was another good one on tonight in the Big Ten, a team that has surprised many. Michigan State had to go into Indiana. Now, they've taken a 4-1 and one record, and they would find out this week if they were for real. Tough to win in Bloomington, Indiana for Judd Heathcote. Eric Anderson posts up, but goes nowhere, turns the ball over. Spartans defense again, collapses on Anderson. He turns the ball over once again. Another turnover, Lyndon Jones has the ball stolen by Mark Montgomery. Offensively, Kirk Mans, 13 in the first half. He hits the fall away. Greg Graham misses the easy two. Misses another easy two. Smith to Mans. Mans then will hit the shot. And then Smith to Ken Redfeld. To Matt 
Sagan got. Back door with the slam. Long knife for Bobby Knight, the general. His team uncharacteristically blown out at home and ranked 12th in the nation, 75 to 57. Michigan State, yes, the Spartans are for real in the Big Ten. They stand at 5 and 1 now. Bobby Knight's team goes to 3 and 3. Elsewhere, Oklahoma, the Sooners in action. They are down by 3 to Iowa State. They lost twice last week. They're trying to knock the lose for the third time in a row. 33 30 is the score there. In the Big East, the St. John's Redmond. Going in, tied for first place with the Georgetown Hoyas in the Big East, both at 5-1. and one. They could take a half-game lead. And Louis Carner second, trying to get Robert Wardan excited. Boo Harvey finds Jason Buchanan. It looks like the Super Bowl's already here. Gets the bucket. Louis Redmond danced to a three-point lead at halftime. The Friars then work it inside. Abdul Shamsuddin, powerful turnaround. Knocks over Jason Williams and gets the foul as well. Friars down by just one, but Williams pulls up, and he's fouled. Williams then in the paint. Nice reversal. St. John's on a big run, and Louie and Wardan can relax with the victory. 83-75 to 75 is the final. The Providence Friars lose for the third time in the Big East this year. St. John's now at 6-1, takes a half-game lead over Georgetown in the Big East. The Friars had won the last three at Providence, but they lose this one. Also, in the top 20, Connecticut, winners of five in a row in the Big East, and they have a big lead over Central Connecticut as they step out of the conference. 54-33 to 33 is the score. More scores and highlights still to come here at halftime of our second game here on your Big East ACC Wednesday. But first, here's a take a look at who are the scoring leaders in college basketball, including Bo, who seems to know scoring. We'll be back. ESPN's NCAA Basketball, North Carolina State versus Duke, is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world, by Budweiser and Bud Light, who'll bring you Bud Bowl II, this time it's war, and by Payne Weber, serving the financial needs of individual, corporate, and institutional clients. In case you missed it earlier, Don DeVoe, the coach of the Florida Gators, has won the battle. Dwayne Chinses has cut the hair you see in this picture here. He cut it back by about four inches. DeVoe said Chinses could not return to the team. He was suspended on January 15th for a fight, fight rather, at a frat party, but the hair was the last factor to get him back on the team. However, he did not play tonight, and for the third straight time without Dwayne Chinses, Florida goes down 71-64. to They lose. Scott Drought facing Vandy with 14 points. Dwayne Davis, 19 points for Florida. Elsewhere in the SEC, LSU ranked number 16 in the nation, hosting Georgia. The Bulldogs not expected to give LSU a tough time when they're at home, especially Chris Jackson. He can roll, and he rolls with the steal here and takes it in for two. Chris Jackson says, not an instant replay, but quick hands anyway, comes up with a steal again. 24 points for Chris Jackson in the first half. You saw him on the list of leading scores in the nation, and that's the reason why. Georgia has an academic All-American who can also play basketball. Alec Kessler spins and banks it in. LSU also had a tall front court. Wayne Sims, the air ball, but there's Stanley Roberts, the first-year player, the seven-footer, who, along with Shaquille O'Neal, gives LSU an amazing front court. 75-71 to 71 is the score right now late in the second half. Also in the SEC, Kentucky. A loser to Auburn, 74-70. to Kentucky is surprised because Auburn picks up only their third victory in the SEC this year. Mississippi and Mississippi State, 60-57. to Three-point game tightened up in the second half. At Roanoke, Virginia, Virginia playing Virginia Tech, and they blow them out, 77-59. Bryant Stiff with 22 points. Bimbo Coles had 20 for Tech. Alabama, Birmingham, and Jacksonville in the Sun Belt, a two-point game, and Jacksonville gets the win. Akron is down big to Kansas State in a non-conference game, 53-28 in the second half. Oklahoma State, the Cowboys against Colorado in the Big Eight, and it's all tied up early at 15 apiece. Southwest Conference, Rice down to Texas A&M. It's in the second half, 75-69. SMU and Houston, this is a 10-point game in the second half. Texas Tech is trailing TCU and the Horned Frogs by 11 in the second half. Non-conference action, Notre Dame, an independent. Now is the time to make their rush to the tournament because coming into this game against Wichita State, they had just eight wins. And Mike Cohen worried about his team. They're up early. Jameer Jackson misses from three-point land. Scott Paddock stuffs it home. 
15 to 1 Irish run. Damon Sweet, extremely sweet along the baseline. Diggers Irish, 38 24 at halftime. Lafonso Ellis, intimidation. And watch the 6'9 sophomore play guard, take it down coast to coast, lay it in. Digger Phelps picks up career victory number 400. As the Irish win by 10, 88 to 78 was the final. Alfonso Ellis with 15 points in the game. Stay with us. There's more to come here at halftime. We'll get back to the second half of Duke and NC State. But first, here's a look at some more scores from around the country on this Wednesday night of college basketball. Telethon time again at Pasquin, and our Meadowlands Auto Mall is bursting with parts. For a limited time only, every car, truck, van, and Jeep in our overstocked eight and a half acre inventory has been drastically reduced for this special event. Hurry down to the Meadowlands on Route 17, just north of Route 3, and see the quality dealership it took three generations to build. Call now about special low rate financing and factory incentives. Hurry in today, Pasquin Telethon ends soon. You've had this cold for how long? Three days. Three weeks? And you still don't feel 100% better? Maybe what you have is a sinus problem. And that means you require specialized medical attention. The type of attention that can be found at the Center for Sinus and Nasal Disease. This state-of-the-art facility allows patients to be thoroughly diagnosed and treated for their persistent nasal and sinus conditions. Now, don't you feel better? The Center for Sinus and Nasal Disease. Seagal is Detective Mason Storm. They thought they'd silenced him. Your man's alive, Lieutenant. But Mason Storm... I think you better dial 911. ...is hard to kill. Now the climate is right for revenge. That wasn't the time. Now's the time. Steven Seagal, hard to kill. Rated R. Starts Friday, February 9th at a theater near you. It's Monday morning in Ford County. That full-size Chevy pickup sure has a more advanced design than Ford. Now that you mention it, the lines do remind me of modern neoclassic sculpture. I see a lot of Bauhaus influence. The understated simplicity even contributes to greater fuel efficiency. Form follows function. High fuel efficiency. No wonder people from Ford prefer Chevy trucks. Nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. Today's truck is Chevrolet. A reminder, coming up after our SEC game, join Dan Patrick, Chris Myers, and Tom Jackson from New Orleans and Bill Patrick in the studio. The top story tonight, Bobby Humphrey of the Denver Broncos and how he's making up with those cracked ribs. Right now, let's get back to Cameron Indoor Stadium to Mike Patrick and Dick Vitale for the second half. Gentlemen. We're at the half in Durham, North Carolina. Duke leading 45-37. Of course, Duke known for its academics, but when the students come into Cameron Indoor Stadium, they become fanatics. Well, we really look for uh, many different uh, uh, qualities. Uh, first, of course, is intelligence. And we like that. They can't be a practice. Uh, they can't run up and down the court. So what they do is they invest, and they invest in, in line. So nobody comes into my lectures with their face painted blue or comes in for an appointment that way. So I suspect this is behavior that's located in one place. They get into the top medical schools and law schools and business schools all over the country. They're uh, incredibly loyal. And we like that. We think that uh, being a Duke basketball fan provides some release from the pressures of everyday life. Certainly we look for maturity, creativity. Yeah! like that. Outside people say you're crazy, but you ask those kids who were in line and uh, if they think they're crazy, if they're not having fun and they're having a great time, they remember it for the rest of their lives. 
They are different and they are special, just like my sidekick. I'll tell you, Mike, they are unbelievable. I believe it's the greatest basketball environment in the country. They really combine the academics and the athletics, and they truly are a sixth man here. They really give them such great, great support. Let's take a look at the first half statistics in North Carolina State did not have the better of it shooting 39 percent. Look at Duke 61 percent rebounds about even turnovers. NC State has done a good job against Duke man to man. A couple of stats that don't show up there. Brian Howard outstanding forward. No points in the first half. Rodney Monroe shooting three out of 14. So we'll keep an eye on those guys in the second half and we'll be back with a tip off of the final 20 in a moment. It's a quiet afternoon in Ford County. Glossy shopping? Yep, said she had a fistful of coupons. Said she's going to get five bucks back. That's nothing. Guy up the road is getting hundreds back. On grocery? Oh, nope, on a new Chevy truck. But with cash back incentives, the benefits of purchasing now grow exponentially over the term of the contract. Cash back. No wonder people from Ford prefer Chevy trucks. Nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. Today's truck is Chevrolet. It's not just a car, it's your freedom. Look, a lot of places think it's okay to use remanufactured parts in the brake job. We don't. See Mr. Goodwrench wherever you see these signs. Nothing's rougher on a man's face than shaving. That's why there's Skin Bracer. It's more than an aftershave. It soothes, cools, tightens pores, so it's good for your skin. Thanks. I needed that. Skin Bracer Aftershave. By Menon. How do you figure your financial future? How do you get an advantage? Look for an edge. Look for a company that can sharpen your opportunities in mutual funds, pensions, IRAs, employee benefit plans, insurance, and much more. Look for the principal edge from the principal financial group, one of America's largest, helping people with the fine points of their financial future, the principal. Look for the edge. I mean, what do I need a computer for? I'm not an accountant. But why should I be the company guinea pig? Why do I need one now? I've done fine without one. Can you imagine me working on a computer? Macintosh has the power to change your mind about computers. The power to be your best. So I was wrong. ESPN's NCAA Basketball, North Carolina State versus Duke, is brought to you by Nike, who reminds you to just do it. And by today's truck, Chevrolet. Nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. Ready to start the second half in Durham, North Carolina, with Duke leading North Carolina State 45-37. Scoring in the first half, Rodney Monroe even shooting three out of 14, and D'Amico both have 10. D'Amico having a career night. Henderson with 14 for the Blue Devils, and he has had the stroke in the first half. Henderson has hit six out of 10. Monroe really having a tough time shooting the three-point shot, 0 for 5 from three-point range. And where have you been, Mr. Howard? He does have five assists in the first half, but they need a score. 0 for 2, averaging 17 points a game. Kubek really played him tough. Good defensive effort, forcing the turnover. Corciani had to call I a timeout time out to avoid that turnover. And we'll take a break with only 15 seconds gone in the second half. It's an eight-point game. Saturday morning in Ford County. I see you got a new Chevy. Yep. That's a pretty smart buy when you amortize the cost of depreciation as it relates to inflation in the GNP. Yep. In fact, when compared with Ford Ranger, Chevy S10 has held more of its value model years 1984 through 88. Yep, and they say they've been worth more when you trade them in, too. A tradition of higher resale value. No wonder people from Ford prefer Chevy trucks. Nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. Yep. Bo knows football. Bo knows baseball. Bo knows basketball, too. Bo knows tennis? No. Bo knows weights. Bo, 
You don't know diddly. Duke leading 45-37 with 19.45 to go in the ballgame. Brian Howard, the senior out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Dick, throughout his career, he's been a model of consistency, but not tonight. Well, you know, he hasn't had a point. Not even looking at the basket. I really believe his problem is he's not moving well without the basketball. They didn't really deny him the ball. Kubek really working defensively, trying to keep the ball out of Howard's hands. And you have to move against Duke. Diamico, Gugliano had a good first half. Line drive jumper. Gugliano's doing all he can to keep them close. You know, they're only down six, and Monroe has a horrible first half shooting the basketball, and Howard's non existent. Nice play by Abdel Nabi to touch packs it back to Bobby Hurley. Henderson for three. Put it in the book. I'll tell you one thing. He has really become a big time college backcourt performer. He has 17. And give him a lot of credit on defense against Monroe. The man who just put that one up. He's checked him most of the game. Monroe trying to match him. Oh, nice look. Nice pass. Nice pass. Nice pass. But what a decision. What a decision by Hurley. There's the T.O. by Valvano. The crazies go bananas. Cameron begins to rock and roll. And this is a great college environment. Biggest lead of the game for the Duke Blue Devils. They're up by 11. 50 to 39. You want a deal? Well, here comes the deal. Now, get $1,000 cash back or low 4.8 APR financing for up to 48 months on all new Cutlass Supremes. This deal is not just another deal. It's Oldsmobile's new generation celebration. We've made it possible for our dealers to pass along millions of dollars to their customers and other models, too. Hurry, these deals won't last forever. This is a deal for the new generation. Oldsmobile. Gillette, we never forget that the business we're really in is understanding men, knowing what it means for a man to look, feel, and be his best. On January 28th, Gillette will introduce Sensor and change the way you shave forever. Here's the last stop on our tour. The Fountain of Youth. This one's on me. How about a nice cold bud, young man? I love this job. Yeah. Excellent decision by Bobby Hurley, the point guard. We talk about a point guard thinking pass rather than shot. Look at number 11. He pushes the rock up the floor, and now he drives the bounce pass to his teammate, squares his body, Kubek, drives the jumper. The Look at assist leaders. There's a guy, Anderson, Kenny, the best freshman in America. Corciani, 7.8 assists, early 6.9, and one of the most underrated guards, Mr. Crotty. As we look at Bobby Hurley from St. Anthony's High School, Jersey City. And Hurley with six assists already tonight. Corciani, oh. nice drive, great pass, and then Henderson blocks it from behind as Gugliotta thought he had the wide open layup. Corciani really drove, had a great angle, made the good look with the left hand, thought he had another assist, and they took it away with the block shot. Gugliotta will try it again. Abdel Nabi got a piece of him, and the shot went. Gugliotta sealed the defensive player off exceptionally well. Took his body, squared it to the baseline. I can't emphasize that enough. Taking the ball, catching it, and then facing the baseline to seal the defensive player away from the basketball. Three fouls on Abdel Nabi. He goes out in a hurry. Hill will come in. Keep in mind that North Carolina State used two timeouts in the first minute five of the second half. The miss, but Howard with the... Hey! Hey! Celebrate Jimmy V. That's the first deuce for Howard. Average 17.5. So after...
after Duke takes its biggest lead at 11, NC State answers with two baskets. Alabama really knows how to utilize the timeout of the clock. Mike, he does an exceptional job as a bench coach on the sideline. Leitner squared up to that shot, but missed it. Monroe, Corciani had the three. Now Monroe from outside the foul line. He's still cold. And that foul will go on Gugliotta as he came through the lane and just swung his left arm. That's the easiest way to pick up a cheap foul, and it's his third. They had a high percentage shot right there by Monroe. Good penetration by Corciani. He's having a tough time tonight. He'd have a lot more assists. Guys aren't delivering. You're right about that, Dick. You don't get the assist unless the basket counts. <laughs> the lead is set. <laughs> Isn't that right? Hey, I, I, know that that right? I know the heat's getting to us up here on top, Mike. <laughs> I like that one. No, you're right. I think the heat's got the best of me. You're way, way up high to call us the catbird seat. Leitner and Diamico working each other over the oh, line. Oh, nice look at that. Back. He'll miss it. Leitner with a follow. He's fouled. What an unselfish team, Mike. Always thinking of the high percentage shot and who has the better shot. Sometimes it becomes a negative. They pass up the good shot. Diamico, his first. Great ball movement by Duke. There's the penetration down the lane, kick to the baseline, and there's the dump down from up on top. Excellent dump down. Leitner works the glass on the offensive boards, draws the contact, goes to the line for two, and he's the best free throw shooter in the ACC. Nine points tonight. Missed one earlier. Shoot 87%, McCaffrey 84, Hurley 81. Not bad. Look at Henderson. Why they really can shoot from that line. One of the best free throw shooting teams in the country. And that's such a special art, especially yeah. in a game of basketball. Late in the game, people begin to foul. The fouls begin to come out, converting foul shots. They've lengthened the lead back to nine with 17-24 to go in the game. Nice pass by D'Amico to Monroe. They find Fortiani open. Back to Monroe. Got it. Monroe has a dozen. They play so well together. They really have an awareness where they are on the floor, Corciani and Monroe. And so does this guy, Hurley and Henderson, and Leighton. Tough pass by Hurley. D'Amico knocked it out of bounds. Not a good pass, throwing that ball over the top. LSU in overtime over Georgia, 81-79. to 81-79. They lost to Alabama after looking superb against Notre Dame, blowing out the Fighting Irish LSU. They got a date Sunday with the running Rebels of UNLV. Hurley, bad pass taken away by Howard. Good anticipation, and he'll do it in touch. Well, Howard getting a little active now, makes the good defensive play, converts in transition. Corciani trying to keep the ball out of Hurley's hands. Howard has four, all in the second half. It's 52-47, Duke. Hanging around all the time, North Carolina State. Leitner trying to get by D'Amico, knocked it out of bounds, but off. And NC State player. I don't know if it's me, Mike, because we're way up high, but it just seems to me that the arena is not rocking and rolling on a consistent basis. The emotion is not there. It's not quite the same as it usually is at Cameron, Dick. You're right. I think they're really exhausting themselves coming in here so early and really going through their routines. They have nothing left when it gets to game time. McCaffrey, number five, into the Duke lineup for Mike Krzyzewski. Leitner against Thompson. Makes himself big and wide and coming to the ball. Good job by Thompson to stay on the floor. Oh, excellent diagonal pass. Beautiful runner by Brian Davis. Notice Mike how we talked on a production meeting today. Driving the gap, driving the angle. They constantly are attacking and driving to the basket. Davis out of Capitol Heights, Maryland. Six off the bench. He's an approved player. He really has worked hard on his game. Monroe got Henderson in the air, missed it. Gugliotta kept it alive. Henderson knocked it back in, but Gugliotta has it. Good hand. Gorgiani, nice drive, pulled up and missed it. And got the loose ball. That's what has kept NC State in this game. Gorgiani stripped by Hurley, but he fouled him. He takes such a pounding, Corciani. He's constantly harassed. He's diving for loose balls. He plays with so much emotion, very tenacious. I believe he's shooting the ball with too much heel and not getting enough fingertip and the rotation on his shot. 
Jamie Knox, number 23, will come in for the first time. Seldom used sophomore out of Vicksburg, Mississippi. And Howard will come out. Good move by Jimmy. Take Howard out for a moment. Get him back on the floor. Derek Wittenberg talking to him. He formed that tandem with Sidney Lowe when he won that miracle national championship in 1983. Forciani, number six in the ACC in free throw shooting, but he missed that one. The lead remains at seven with 15.26 to go. Make it six. Forciani shows a lot of endurance. They ask him to play a lot of minutes. He plays hard on a consistent basis. Loves to play basketball. Henderson working on Monroe. Threw it away. Here comes Porciani. Oh, he'll get the trail man. There's the trail man. Blocked from behind by Leitner. What a play. They did a great job. Run the other way. Davis. He missed. Duke does not miss too many fast break opportunities. You know, Corciani made a great decision getting the ball in the row at that foul line. The Leitner came out of nowhere with a blocked shot. Gugliano almost had himself in trouble. Corciani down the lane, pulls up for the run. That's his strongest suit, taking the ball to the basket, driving to the goal. Valvano constantly cheering on his sideline. Mike Krzyzewski sees the lead cut to four, and he wants a timeout with 14.39 to go. Browning invites you to shop at Meltzer Sporting Goods, 118 Outwater Lane, Garfield. Browning's new Gore-Tex boot combines the best in Browning quality materials with the state-of-the-art waterproof lightweight boot design. Bose Brownings are crafted from the finest hardwoods and materials. Over 350 years of tradition, skill, and devotion can be yours in the selection of Browning high-grade guns. All this and much more at Meltzer's, where the tradition lives on. You've had this cold for how long? Three days. Three weeks? And you still don't feel 100% better? Maybe what you have is a sinus problem. And that means you require specialized medical attention. The type of attention that can be found at the Center for Sinus and Nasal Disease. This state-of-the-art facility allows patients to be thoroughly diagnosed and treated for their persistent nasal and sinus conditions. Now, don't you feel better? The Center for Sinus and Nasal Disease in Inglewood. Miss the world's finest players as they try to start the new year with a Grand Slam win. The Australian Open continues tomorrow afternoon at 2 Eastern only on ESPN. I'm Bill Patrick coming up on SportsCenter. It's showtime in Indianapolis as Pat Riley leads his Lakers up against the Pacers. Mike Tyson hits the deck. We'll have that in living color. Civil War breaks out in Quebec and of course a live report from New Orleans. Join us. Take a look at that last play. Great defense by Christian Leitner. Tremendous play by Corciani. Draws McCaffrey, dumps it to the shooter, and there's Leitner. I don't know, maybe we see the reincarnation of Danny Ferry. I tell you what, he plays just like him, and there is Ferry's retired jersey, one of the great players in the history of Duke basketball. And Leitner has all the qualities that Danny Ferry had. Here's the field goal shooting story. NC State with twice as many opportunities. They've hustled after the loose ball. McCaffrey back to Hurley. Now they've got a three-guard offense in there with Henderson. Knocked away and stolen by Corciani. Pulls up for the three. And he buries it. That's the three to go down. Corciani has 10 and it's been cut to one. North Carolina State has never led in this game. Corciani does a great job on a defensive end in terms of anticipating and getting steals. Oh, what a play by Do Hurley. you believe that? Oh, the smile on Corciani's face says it all. He just threw it up and it went in. Well, he did everything possible defensively. Take a look right here. He beats him to the spot. He beats him to the spot. He gets the hand up. Hurley just flips oh. it up. He said, just like my daddy taught me. And his daddy jumps out of his seat in the living room in Jersey City and says, that's my boy. Here's what both these guards have done. Corciani with the edge and points. Hurley with the edge and assists. 56-53, Duke. Hurley trying to complete the three-point play. He's short. Hurley's certainly getting indoctrinated into college basketball against the point guards in this league. Kenny Anderson, John Crotty. Then they had the game against Ramil Robinson of Michigan. Don't forget the guy that gave him the most trouble, King Rice of North Carolina. Corciani in and out. 
Thompson keeps it alive. Good offensive rebound. Missed. Ooh, Thompson, Thompson got it again. Missed again. Great effort by Thompson. Abdel Nabi must be feeling a little bit of the flu yet from yesterday because he's not had a whole lot of playing time. Henderson the running three. Missed it. Fagans knocked it out of bounds. Fagans and Thompson give him a few minutes off the bench. North Carolina State. That's a big plus. Look at Mike Krzyzewski. His numbers have been absolutely amazing in his last four years. When you think about it, 117 and 28. Abdel Nabi fouled on the way up, and Porciani picks up his third personal foul. You know, when you look at Krzyzewski's record, 216 and 95 in 10 years, you got to look back to the first three years, Dick. He came in here, and there was not a lot of talent. He struggled in his first three years, well under 500. So the record really deceptive. He's been sensational after those first three years. Well, three final fours in the last four years, two ACC titles. You talk about the last four years, 117 and 28, 80 percent, 16 and 6 in the NCAA. That really impresses me. But don't forget the guy down the road from him has got some pretty good numbers, too. Jim Valvano's in his 10th year, 14 and 6 in the NCAA, two ACC titles, an NCAA championship, and 204 and 106. You don't think I'm going to talk about a Krzyzewski so powerful and not give my guy big some PR. Abdel Nabi at the line. It's 57-53. Duke Abdel Nabi has five tonight. Quiet in here all of a sudden. They got very silent. They tried to pull that on me when I was shooting the bricks before the game. It didn't bother me though, did it, Mike? I still No, you kept Jack. shooting bricks. No, no. 58-53. Oh, nice and a great pass to Diamico. That'll be a goaltend on Abdel Nabi. And that matches Diamico's career high, 12 points. He had 10 in the first half. That's a real good look. That's really the pass that really creates a lot of problems. The diagonal pass against pressure defense. Hinnant will get some more playing time at that rate. Both teams going with a three-guard offense right now. Hinnant on Henderson. Partially blocked by Howard. Henderson forced the action right there. Oh, Hinnant, nice Gugliotta. Tried to draw the foul. That could be offensive. Foul. It is. No doubt about it. Larry Lumbo with a great call. Gugliotta had to do a shot with the head fake, and then he definitely leaned in. Now you watch it. Dump it down. And now he puts him in the verticality. There he is. He steps right into the... Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He knocks Lincoln right away with the left shoulder. Good officiating crew tonight. Lenny Wirtz, Larry Lumbo, and Sam Croft. 58-55, the margin three. Duke has it back. Leitner. Porciani really gives great help. He closes off the driving angle. Abdel Nabi from Henderson. Beautiful pass. Good high-low entry. The angle was created because of the pressure extended on Leitner up from the box. Henderson rarely gets credit for his passes, but he's a pretty good assist man. Howard for three. He just can't buy one from outside. Neither can Monroe. Abdel Nabi a little flashy. Hurley. He tried to get a little fancy, too, and threw it away. Well, he forced that. He was anticipating the offensive player in the box. Porciani uh, to look. Howard. Lost it. Forced it up. D'Amico had it. Leitner took it away. Hurley and Corciani really loved to pass the basketball. And look at Corciani with another steal. Howard. D'Amico. Oh, D'Amico's having the game of his life. 14 points. And without him, NC State would be out of this one. D'Amico really working on the boards. 6'11", 252 out of Reading, Pennsylvania, averages 6.9. And for two and a half years, they told us his name is D'Amico. Originally signed, originally signed with South Carolina and Bill Foster. He coached Jimmy Valvano. And then Foster left South Carolina. He came to North Carolina State. Hurley looking inside. Tough pass, and it's taken away. Corciani with a loose ball again. Almost lost it out of bounds. He's always around the ball. He's always around the ball by 13 turnovers by Duke. 10 minutes, 58 seconds to go. Mike Patrick and Dick Vitale with you on ESPN. Glad you could join us on Wednesday night in the ACC. Duke is rotating into a zone. They've rotated to a 2-3 zone now. Very rare. I think he's doing it just for fatigue reasons. He wants to save his club a little bit, goes to the zone. Also, Monroe isn't in there, Dick. Gets him a little rest. That's true, too. Monroe, the shooter's out of the game. 
You may go to Howard. He can make the three. Gugliotta goes to the baseline. Short. Henderson. NC State has not been in very good offensive rhythm most of this game. And that ball's not falling down. That really creates problems. And it's not falling down for Howard. Yet they're really, you know, to be down three and not really playing well offensively yeah. is really pretty good position to be in. Monroe will come back out, uh, back in rather, at the first opportunity. Trying to get some motion. Cortiani's trying to deny the ball and not let Hurley get the ball. See this? Oh, now they lay the screen. No plays off him. Shot clock's at 10. Oh, nice curl move. What a curl move by Henderson. Henderson missed the shot. Oh, oh Leitner leans in. Offensive foul. Offensive Christian Leitner. Leitner looks down at words. He says, why, why? No doubt. Excellent curl. Got a little over anxious. Christian Leitner. I'll let you make the call. Now, you watch. Leitner's going to come down with the offensive rebound. Davis there he is. Back now, back watch him step and lead into the defensive the player ball. who's stationed there. And Letty Words puts that hand right behind the head. He's like, I got your nail. Brian Howard ought to get two points just for taking that one in the chops. Brian Howard, every time I have seen him, has been such an active player. He doesn't seem to be active tonight. Howard's got the ball now. North Carolina State, the Wolfpack down by 3 9, 23 to go in the game. Thompson to Monroe. A three oh, time. what a great job defensively. Duke steps out of what we call hedging. The officials consulting as to who that ball went off of. They want the offensive foul. Henderson's calling for the offensive foul. This is called hedging. Now watch the defensive player step right out. Look at him step right out. I thought he made contact. I didn't think there was enough to call a foul. It looked like the ball was bounced off of a Duke player out of bounds. Duke does a great job of hedging. We talked about playing tag defensively. Well, the officials disagreed, so they call it a held ball situation, and the possession arrow will give the ball to Duke. Jimmy says, can I get a break? Look at him. He says, I can't get a break. I can't get a break out here. Nine minutes, 13 seconds, and counting from Cameron Indoor Stadium in Durham. Duke by three over North Carolina State. This is Henderson. They've got him isolated. Over Monroe and short. Howard with the rebound. Always looking, trying to find Gorgiani. Monroe. Shot won't go, but he gets the foul from McCaffrey. Does Monroe have the license to shoot it almost any time he wants? I'll let Chris Jackson down at LSU to see the South. Storyline from Durham, North Carolina State. Brian D'Amico with a career game. And North Carolina State has pounded the boards offensively. Henderson has been a great shooter tonight, 17 points, and the bench has really helped Duke. I think another big storyline, we've talked about it often, is the non-existence of Brian Howard, who's too talented not to be a factor. And the poor outside shooting of Rodney Monroe, very uncharacteristic. Monroe has 13 tonight, and he has missed all five three-point shots. He is the best in the ACC, one of the five best in the country from long range. But with all these troubles, down a, point. down a point. That's because they're really playing aggressive defense. And Corciani's a born leader. Can't measure that kid by numbers. McCaffrey finds Hurley. Oh, nice nice pass inside. Triple team and Diamico with a block. Hey, Diamico, you making that guy a big star tonight, man. Tell you Diamico. what, he deserves it here. They take the lead. This quiet. crowd has been quiet the last five minutes. On the screen down. Exchange on the boxes. McCaffrey on Monroe. Porciani passed on the three. He's not interested in shooting right now unless he gets a six foot. And he's a penetrator and a driver, not a low range ball. This keeps up. They're going to start looking for Diamico. Monroe on the drive. Hit it and he's fouled. Now, when you have a Rodney Monroe, baby, that's option number one. Rodney has the license in the green light. Now that goes to Powell of Bruce's neck. A la lightweight champ. Foul is on Brian Davis. That's the 15 foul now against both clubs. And Monroe will try to convert a three-point point and give NC State a two-point lead. 
crowd's a little stunned here. Dave. Yeah, they really are stunned. Very silent. NC State with two losses in the ACC. Duke with only one. They tied for the top spot. Monroe in and out. I think North Carolina's rooting a little bit right now at home. Oh, I think so. North Carolina State. I think so. They got a big date with Georgia Tech coming up after a home date with Clemson. Anderson to Leitner. Good anticipation by Howard. Makes the steal. Porciani on the run. Monroe. He's got the rhythm now. Not only did Corciani find the role, he sealed it off, then he jumps like a little kid. He loves it. He loves it. Mike Krzyzewski wants to talk about this one with 7.42 to go. His club is now down by three. An excellent play right now by Chris Corciani. Here he is now going to push the ball up the court right at Hurley. A little shake and bake. Here goes the masterful assist man. And now he's looking for his partner. He dumps it up. Freeze it. See what he did right there. He knocked Hurley out of the way after he gave the ball up. He seals Hurley so he can't step out on Monroe. What a smart, heady play by Chris Corciani. A coach's dream. Duke has not scored in nearly five minutes. Rivers had that pass, anticipated step in the passing lane. NC State has been very active on defense. Hurley with the fake, had it knocked away. Kubek. Hurley again. Hurley, shot clock is at seven, gets it to Leitner. Gonna have to put something up. Hurley for three under pressure. Got it! Big three by Hurley. A big three by Hurley. What a shot by Bobby Hurley. Give him nine points on the night. He breaks a five-minute dry spell and ties it at 63. That might, might have been the biggest best. Oh, they all touch the floor. They all touch the floor. That means that they need a defensive stop right now. And it gets the crowd into it. But who answers Porciani? He said, you can play any defense you want. Yeah, touch the floor. That's a trademark here, Duke. All the five players touch the floor, meaning they've got to come up with a big defensive stop. Porciani with 12 points now. Monroe called for holding underneath. Foul number 21. Hey, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. I thought they told us earlier that was you won. I don't know, Mike. What do we got going? What they did, yeah. They told us earlier. Now it's Georgia well, winning. We were all wrong. Georgia wins. Wow. 94 92. We got this information. Georgia with a big win. Alex Kessler, you talk about an underrated player down in Georgia. The Pro Scouts love it. Kubek for three. Rebound to Monroe. And who to? But who else? Georgiana. You know, LSU looks so brilliant, as I said earlier, against the University of Notre Dame. Then they lose to Alabama. After the play, they had to travel after a TV date. Oh, loose ball. Hurley no, he got it away from Corciani. Blocked. Kubek with a foul. I know Hurley should have given the rock up for the easy layup. Howard got the block. But Duke was there for the follow with tying it at 65 and under six minutes to go. Good effort by Howard defensively coming back. Get the block on Hurley. Now we've got some perspiration on the floor, and the ball boys are going to come out to clean it off. What well, some great action here in the second half. Well, great first game, too, with St. John's and Providence. St. John's got a big date with Connecticut. And, Louis, don't get nervous, but Connecticut's going to beat St. John's in their new building. A little revenge Saturday. They're opening up a state-of-the-art pavilion, 8,000 seats on Stores, Connecticut, where Jimmy Calhoun built an outstanding program. NC State's ball in a tie game, 545 left. And an and and go. Good hands, knocked away by Hill. It's amazing how Hill has earned playing time at crunch time in the last five minutes. Mike Krzyzewski recognizing how the kid has been really contributing defensively. Corciani against Hurley. Hill Pick playing how Ripple. It's been a good battle between those two tonight. Gugliotta double team. Hurley reached in and fouled him. When you think about the point guards in the ACC, it's just amazing, all the outstanding point guards. And if Clemson had an outstanding point guard to go with the two horses they got on the baseline, and Davis and also Campbell, they would be totally dynamite. Hey, nobody talks Clemson, but they only got one loss in the conference, too. Well, they have six games coming up against Duke, North Carolina, and Georgia Tech, so uh, 
may be a little misleading with a three and one record right now, but uh, well, you'll find out if they're really a contender, exactly. like we found out tonight with Michigan State. Judd Heathcote sent a message loud and clear to the Big Ten that we are a contender and not a pretender. Blowing out Indiana in Bloomington. At Indiana, that's amazing. What was it, 17? About 17. Yeah, Judd Heathcote's got himself a fine team with Steve Smith and a host of players. And as we talked about on Monday, Dick, nobody had mentioned Purdue or Michigan State before the season started. Yeah, Purdue, Gene Cady, still undefeated in the conference. Corciani with a new 45-second shot clock. With a one-on-one move by Rodney Monroe. D'Amico, foul by Leitner. Monroe kicks it out to D'Amico. I think D'Amico was thinking that maybe Rodney was going to shoot the rock, oh, but he oh, finds him as he made a slashing move to the goal. Look at the lieutenant general. Now look at the look right now by Monroe. He dumps it out. He says, D'Amico, I can pass the rock like Corciani. And he dumps it to him. And Betty Woods with the whistle. Three fouls on Leitner. This is not D'Amico's strong suit. 38% free throw shooter. Really not a good free throw shooter. You know, he's a victim of a rule I'd like to see change. He decided to come to North Carolina State, gets penalized, has to sit a year out after Bill Foster, who recruited him early, goes to coach at Northwestern, leaves South Carolina. I believe, and I've said it time and time again, any youngster that signs early and the coach is let go or the coach leaves, that youngster should be allowed to be re-recruited again and not penalized by sitting out a year. I agree with you wholeheartedly because not only they go the pro with the program, they go with the coach. The Amico hits one out of two, and NC State is up by a point. A career-high 15 tonight for Brian D'Amico. We don't have really a well-played game here, Mike, but we got a typical, dramatic finish coming up. It might be the last team with the ball that wins this. Leitner from Hurley. Howard tried to come from the backside to help. Didn't get there in time. Good two-man play. Intelligent play. Take it into your big-time baseline option. Wouldn't be a bit surprised if the last team with the ball wins. Oh, what Howard a touch pass. pass to D'Amico. Gugliotta has it again. He's been doing that all night. Missed again. Henderson. He really does a great job with the head fake. Gugliotta and D'Amico have fought so hard inside tonight. Up one. Big possession right now by Duke. Hurley against Corciani. Didn't get the roll that time. Loose ball. Corciani comes out with it. Always finds the loose ball. Look at his eyes. Always looking for the open man. For three. He says, no, baby. I'm shooting the rock from three-point land. Chris Corciani with 15 points, and State is back up by two. Looks ugly, but he converts. Doesn't really have that pretty jump shot. Four minutes to go. The only pretty ones are the ones that go in. Leitner. Offensive foul on Leitner. A little bit late with the ball, yeah. Sam Croft. A little bit late with that uh, ball. Leitner has been out of control going down the lane a couple of times tonight. Mike Krzyzewski will leave him on the court. I think they really would be much more effective, and I'm sure Jimmy Valvano would like to see it if they post Leitner up on the box instead of catching the ball at the foul line looking to drive to the goal. State by two with possession of the ball. Monroe with a hanging jumper. Kubek, now Henderson. Excuse me, Hill. Curly ahead to Henderson. Tied at 69. He's got that little spin move with the left hand. Great to learn right now that Byron's big house games at Winston-Salem won his 800th game to join the legend Adolph Ruff. Congratulations, big house. Unbelievable performance. That guy for Hand many a year. Henderson has 19 points. Gugliano lost it on the way. Uh-oh, three on one. He's got to go to Leitner. He's got to go. No, he goes to Henderson. Oh, I thought he was going to go to Leitner. He goes back to Henderson. But they get the deuce, and that's all that counts. And V gets a T.O., baby. And the... Duke with a four-point run has regained the lead. 71-69, three minutes to go. Three minutes to go in this one. 71-69, Duke. And as Dick said earlier, Clarence Big House Gaines gets his 800th 
career win as Winston-Salem beats Livingstone 79-7. I've had the pleasure to work with Earl the Pearl Monroe during the NBA playoffs, and Earl Monroe played for Mr. Gaines and just absolutely loves him. How many wins does that put him ahead of you? I'll tell you what, two too many, man. About seven. No, no, really. I've worked 11 years now at ESPN, and I haven't lost the game in 11 <laughs> years, baby. I'm undefeated. One timeout left for each ball club. If there's a jump ball situation, North Carolina State will get it off the possession arrow. Wolf back down by two, Forciani with the ball. Hill really doing a job denying the ball to Howard. Really trying to extend defensively. They switch on him. Howard forces him into a switch. Oh. Tied at 71 as Brian Howard now has six all in the second half. They did a great job forcing the switch. Held. Hill got bumped and Howard wide open. Took advantage of his experience. Henderson to Leitner. Off balance goes up. Foul by Howard. That's what I was saying a little bit earlier, Mike. I think they got to lock him on the boxes and get him the ball with his back to the basket because if he doesn't convert, he's a tremendous free throw shooter. Foul on Howard is his third. His third the ACC leader of free throws on the free throw line pushed it later from out of Angola, New York. He's hit three out of four tonight. Missed a couple of big free throws as a freshman, but has really improved since then. Missed that big one against Arizona. Yeah. Had that great performance against a lot. And then we jinx the kid and he comes up, bricks that one. Didn't even look good on that one. Well, that wasn't even close. Woo. That looked like my partner shooting the free throw. <laughs> Which partner is that? <laughs> 71 all. He'll get another. Not Keith Jackson. He can really stroke it. So it's you. <laughs> Lightyear hits the second. Duke goes back up by one. Okay. Davis will come in for Mike Krzyzewski. Kubek will come out. Davis, the more active defender. They really, they really must have word that Ala Abdel Nabi is under the influence of that flu from yesterday where he could not practice. Because he'd be on the floor right now at crunch time. Nasty stuff, too. Monroe fake the pass, goes for the shot, doesn't hit it. Diamico with the rebound. Diamico, what a game he has had. Some of the big offensive rebound, the wide body. We're down to 2 11. Porciani getting instructions from Jim Valvano. Looks like whoever has the ball last, Mike's going to get a chance for the W. Howard, that's a tough pass. Gugliotta couldn't come up with it, but he's fouled by Brian Davis. Davis comes into the game for defensive quickness, almost forces the turnover. Mike Krzyzewski cannot believe it. He says, with all the contact, you're going to blow that look at him. He's beside himself. That was a tough call. Very tough call. It should have been a no call. Yeah. Of course, it's easy for us up here, too, isn't it? Did they call a technical? There's been a technical on somebody. Well, we're way, way up high, so we can't help out as to who the technical. Oh, they called an intentional foul. Intentional foul. Now, that makes that call unbelievable. They called one. The worst of all time, Al McGuire went absolutely bananas in an NBC game, Temple and UNLV. I can't believe there was an intentional foul in that series we just looked at. I can't believe it. You show me where there's an intentional foul. He's coming after the ball. No way. Diving for the loose ball. Playing the passing lane. No chance. But it was a call. And State will get the ball back with 158 to go. Wow. Man, oh man. Wow. Like, I'm blind, got one eye, and I'm a lot further than they are, and I can't see any intentional foul. Oh, wide open, and Miss Corciani. Gugliotta working against Davis. A lot of... Oh! It right to... Oh! A little panic time. Duke up by one. Reminiscent of the championship Georgetown. game. now. Georgetown in North Carolina. Freddie Brown. Wasn't quite as a dramatic spot. I'll tell you one thing. Freddie Brown's doing great in his life, though. He's become an absolute superstar in the business world. Duke holding the ball. State in a zone, trying to bring them out. Duke is up by one. But there's a minute 26 to go in the game. You have to score here. They need a score right in this possession. Hurley. Shot clock at nine. Oh, nice screen. And he's going to slide it. Leitner inside. Lost the ball. Oh, shot. what a play. Down to two. What, a, what a play by Porciani. What a defensive play. He made a great defensive play to strip the freshman to show him I'm the boss. I'm the experienced guy. What a 
tenacious job by Chris Corciani. The play of the game by Corciani, the junior out of Miami. He has 17 points on the night and five assists. And what a sensational defensive play. He is the ACC leader in steals at more than three a game. Well, he has right now. When you look at his steals, 54 coming into this game. He pops the ball loose. He made the play initially and shut it down early, and then he converts it. And look at his emotion. Sprint back. Look at him. Chris Corciani. Oh, his dad Gabe is celebrating back in Miami. And Corciani has 13 points in the second half, Dick. He has really picked up the offensive slack that NC State was feeling. Something a lot of people don't know about Corciani, I guess some, some ACC fans do, he was the two-time player of the year in the state of Florida, the only guy who has ever been named Mr. Basketball in Florida two years. And one of the reasons, 3,435 points, 1,497 assists. There's a look at the situation with time and not timeouts right now. North Carolina State with one, Duke with zero. We look at possession arrow, favors North Carolina State. We've been saying in the last five minutes, it looks like it's going to come down to the last possession. Another dramatic, a dramatic ACC finish. Maybe like our Minnesota-Wisconsin Big Ten game on Monday. You know, Dick, if Duke loses this game, I think they can look back to the times when they were up seven, eight, nine points and didn't put North Carolina State away because the Wolfpack wasn't playing that well. Thank you. They did not put the knockout punch when Monroe wasn't stroking it, when Howard didn't score in the first half. They had many an opportunity to apply the knockout punch, but credit North Carolina State. Toughness for hanging in and taking the lead now. Hurley to Leitner. Kubek to Leitner, excuse me. Now Hurley. I got two big options. Hurley for three. That wasn't one that I would have thought you would have went for. I thought the two big options would have been Henderson coming off for a jumper or the dump down into Leighton. You've got to have a lot of guts to shoot that as a freshman. Now they've got to go for the steal or the foul. And Torciani and Monroe are the guys that will handle the ball because they're the best free throw shooter. As a matter of fact, they're both sensational. The other guys up front have struggled. They call the one-on-one -on -one there, and it certainly was based on the rule and the way the rule is defined in the book. Make an attempt to play the ball. But I could have accepted that a lot better than a previous one where they called the intentional, because you know and I know that was a premeditated foul sure. right there in that sequence. Yeah, that earlier call just uh, leaves me befuddled. Totally just blows my mind. I mean, the kid was coming into denial defense. Monroe, six out of seven tonight, 18 points. And a great free throw shooter. If he hits the next one, State would go up by three, and Duke would have to shoot, you would presume, the three-point shot, although there's 29 seconds left. Rodney's an 83% shooter, 86 in the ACC, 83 for the season. I just love that backcourt. And Valvano, to me, is a master working with backcourts. He lets the players know their roles and lets the play. Oh, it comes out. Neil yeah, Duke can tie with a two-point shot. They can take the lead with a three and an incredible miss from Monroe. Well, you know you're at home right now. And when you're at home, the overtime usually favors the home team. McCaffrey tried a three and he's fouled by Brian Howard. Really forced that shot. Got lucky to get fouled yeah. on the play. And he is an excellent free throw shooter. Basically there, like some people wonder about the three, you're down a deuce, you're at home. If you get the high percentage layup inside to a late, you take it, tie, go to OT. If the three comes within the realm of your offense to one of your three-point shooters, you shoot it. Now McCaffrey is number two in the ACC in free throw shooting. Yeah, he's a lot a of pressure on the freshman here. First trip to the line tonight. Sort of straight on that one a little bit. You could just see that he felt the pressure that he tightened up because he's normally he's normally an excellent clinician when he's on the free throw line with the fine release. Oh, he has done both but it's oh, right now, unbelievable. Oh, oh, a cow what a play by Christian Leitner. Look at this. He's gonna he's gonna spread the court. Valvano's not gonna he's gonna spread the court. He's gonna take him to the penetration and a dump down. D'Amico gets it to Howard. McCaffrey tries to tie him up in one second. OT! OT! Oh, what great defense by Duke. Jim Valvano thought he might get out of here with one, but Howard missed a shot at the buzzer. We'll be back in a moment.
We will go to overtime at Cameron Indoor Stadium in Durham, North Carolina, tied at 74. Here's the last eight seconds. They spread the court, put the ball in Corciani's hands. He's a little dumped down. He wants to get it back. They can't get him back the ball. Howard's going to just take the off-balance jumper. He has no other choice. Game goes to OT. Look at V working that sideline, bouncing like a cheerleader. Now, Dick, North Carolina State had a timeout left, but I think you and I both agree with what Jim Valvano did because he's got Chris Corciani. Why call timeout? I definitely feel that way. I think sometimes the timeout can hurt you. It allows the defensive team, one, to set up. Two, it makes it difficult many a time to throw the ball back in bounds. And three, when you possess a point guard with the ability of a Corciani and his experience and know-how, don't break the flow of it. I don't question that call at all by Valvano going for the shot without the T.O. Abdel Nabi back into jump center against Diamico. Put a hand on the ball, but Corciani comes out with it. Usually the overtimes favor the home team. Monroe was coming alive in the second half. Missed that one. Leitner with a loose ball. Leitner gets that big tip on the two bricks by McCaffrey. What a pass. Abdel Nabi from Hurley. A bullet half the length of the court. Great look by Hurley. Abdel Nabi's going to probably try to gun it out in the OT. Remember, he's been faced with the flu, did practice yesterday, and didn't get a whole lot of playing time tonight. Henderson on Monroe. Hurley should try to deny the ball. He shouldn't let the ball get in the hands that easily of Corciani. See, right now, they shouldn't let him get it back. Gugliotta, nice pass from D'Amico. He has 14 points. And Brian D'Amico has played a sensational game tonight for State. Good look by D'Amico to his Italian buddy, Gugliotta, who moved exceptionally well without the ball. A great look inside. Holly did the same thing. Great pass to Leitner. Yeah, but not only the great pass, Mike, the way he sealed off to the baseline, and they got the ball to the baseline ahead. What a perfect entry. They're running a clinic right now. Corciani lost his balance and went down. Duke with a two-point lead gets the ball back. What a great game. I mean, it has not been really, really a well-played game in the art of basketball, but it's been a great game because of the intensity and the toughness with each possession. It may not be art, but it's life, and I like it. I like that line. Hey, I like that line. You're going out to Hawaii now, enjoying yes, 11 days. You get the great assignments, you and Thysmith. Unbelievable. Way to like pull our boss up. The Pro Bowl is important. We have to be there. I'm going to call Mr. Steve Bornstein up, and I want to get involved in football, and I want to go to Hawaii. All right, here we go right now. Let's talk some hoops. back working outside. I'm going to try to slide Leitner down in the box again. Henderson hanging in midair and buried it. They really look like they've come alive in the overtime, Mike. They were dead in the last four minutes of the regulation time. Henderson with 23, the lead is four. Good. Big possession right now for State. Megans and Thompson both on the court for Jim Balbano. Monroe forced the shot and missed. Rebound to Leitner. Leitner really working the boards now. And here's Hurley coming alive at the point. Leitner with 15 rebounds. Oh, what Tough a nice pass catch. to Abdel Nabi. Great catch, missed the shot. Great catch right there by Abdel Nabi. He really is a little tired trying to get up and down the floor. Four point game. Monroe, good feed. Howard, basket counts, and he's fouled. Big time score by Howard right there. What's that, his third basket of the night? Howard had six points. That would be his fourth. Remember, did not score in the first half. Look at the coaching staff for North Carolina State, Whitford, Dick Stewart. And Dick, that foul is on Christian Leitner. That is his fifth. He fouls out of the ballgame with 18 points and 15 rebounds. He had himself quite a night, but now it puts pressure on Abdel Nabi, who's under, as we said, the flu. to really have to give him some strength inside. And Mike Krzyzewski will go to Thomas Hill to get him into the game. That's a big drop off, not only in size, but in experience. Thomas just starting to get some playing time as Leitner got all that playing time last year with the team that went to the Final Four. Howard, his first trip to the line tonight, he could cut the lead to one, and does. 80, 79, 243 to go. Duke basketball, the Blue Devils have the lead. What do you think, Mike?
right, last possession again. Just like I said, five minutes to go. Last team of the ball wins. Abdelnabi trying to get the good angle on the box. Hill picked up his dribble. He finally got it to him. Pitch the ball in the post. You really want to look opposite because the defense comes to the ball. Porciani trying to deny the bounce pass right through Henderson's leg out to NC State. Mike Krzyzewski trying to coach point, go the other way, the other way. And Croft says no. Former disciple of the general. State with a chance to take the lead. Here they go to one four offense, putting the ball in Porciani's hands. Pass it, go through the defense. Porciani backdoor, Hurley, what a job. Good defensive play by Hurley, but not a real heady play right by Howard there, trying to get that ball into Porciani's hands. Hurley is some question. Henderson, he loves that shot. He really does. He loves putting it to the left hand, bounce the ball with the left, get the feel, treat the dribble as a pass. He treats the dribble as a pass. Look at the ball touch the floor. They all touch the floor. So come on, baby. Let's play some D. Henderson has 25. The lead is three. Now you can feel the electricity here, Mike. You can feel it. Porciani working on Hill. This is Howard. Monroe might look for the three. Just inside the line. Oh, air ball. It comes early. Got a three on one. Got a three on one. Kubek. Got a three on one. A five-point lead is Hurley. Get a T.O. Jimmy V. Get a T.O. Get a T.O. baby. 9,000 fans come to their feet. Duke has sprinted to a five-point lead with 105 left in overtime. 105 left in overtime. Look at Bobby Hurley on the last fast break. Hurley with great penetration, Mike. He runs the ball up the court, and he's aware right now. He knows where his teammate is, Kubik. And Kubik did an amazing job to finalize that play and convert it and bring the house to its feet. The lead now five with 105 to go. Both teams with one timeout left. And the possession arrow will favor Duke. So everything right now in the Blue Devils' favor. Basketball is such a crazy game. Just when you thought that maybe Duke would begin to come apart, Leitner goes out of the game. They rise and make the big play. Henderson and Hurley with the delivery. And now they're up five. Look for the three-point shooters. Monroe, who's having a terrible night from three-point range, certainly is a guy you got to look for if you're North Carolina State to try it again. And Henderson will try to deny him. He's coming off a double screen on a switch time. Gianni can also take that shot, as can Monroe. But Duke is looking for Rodney Monroe. They've done a sensational job on it. Howard for three. Hit it! Howard finally comes alive with the big three. He made a big basket a little bit earlier. 84-82. There is only a tick difference in the shot clock and game clock. Abdel Nabi makes the save. Kubek. Abdel Nabi's size made that happen. His size because it wasn't a good pass by Henderson. Corciani reached in, committed the personal. That is four on Chris Corciani. Krzyzewski said, hey, you call it intentional earlier in this game. That was nowhere an intentional. That's premeditated. Blow the whistle. Hurley with nine points tonight. He is 0 for 1 from the free throw line. And remember, one of the real premier free throw shooters on his team went to the line a little bit earlier than freshman McCaffrey and looked like he never shot a free throw. The pressure got to him. Hurley hits this one. Not getting to Hurley right now. I guarantee his father's pacing. I know Bob Sr. very well. And I guarantee he's pacing it at home in Jersey City. This is the big one. It would make it a four-point lead, and NC State would have to score on two possessions. It's only three. They, they can tie chance. with the bomb. They can tie right now. And the guy they got to try to set a screen for is Monroe. They know. Look at that double team in him. Had it pop out. Look at Henderson. Oh, they try to lay a screen for him. Portiani can shoot it. Abdel Nabi with a rebound. Abdel Nabi gives him the big rebound. Remember, didn't play a whole lot. He's trying to give a courageous effort here under the flu. And D'Amico, who's had the game of his life, commits the foul. Abdelnabi really struggled yesterday in practice. He could not go at all, basically. Tonight, he didn't get a whole lot of playing time. Henderson's getting a timeout. You know, Dick, to, for, you hear 
announcers like us talk about players being sick, and you don't think of these guys, you know, they're young, they're in great shape. But the flu is going around all over the country, so if you've got the flu and you think this kid ought to be out there running up and down the way he normally does, why don't you get out of bed, run up and down the stairs a couple of times, turn the thermostat up to 85 degrees in your house, and see how you feel in about 10 minutes. Unbelievable. I'll tell you, he's really shown a lot of guts coming in to play the overtime because he did not play much a little bit earlier. But it's just another great night on Tobacco Road, an exciting moment. Sensational game for both ball clubs, 85 to 82. Duke leading with 10 seconds to go. Tomorrow, of course, ESPN's coverage of college basketball will continue. Texas at number six, Arkansas. Then Iowa against number 21, Minnesota. They lost a heartbreaker at Wisconsin Monday. And Santa Clara against St. Mary's. That one starts at midnight. You talk about one of the most improved players in basketball. Not this zany. He'll probably be the president of the United States. He's probably got 1,500 on his SATs. But you know, you talk about one of the most improved players in America, Les Jepsen out of Iowa, who had the big week last week and sparked him to that big win over Michigan. We have him next Monday on Big Monday, Illinois and Iowa. Always a special matchup. Always something to see, especially now. There's a lot of animosity between both schools over Deion Thomas, and it'll be interesting to see the relationship. Hey, North Carolina State has one timeout left. Abdel Nabi can ice this. If he makes the front of the one and one, it would be a four point lead. If he misses, State would have another chance to tie. The book would say right now that this is the guy you'd want at the line. He has not played a whole lot. He's under the weather physically. Probably could feel a little pressure now. The book says that, but let's see what happens. The book, the book works. is right. The book works. Here right comes Porciani. Got a shot for a tie. They need the three. Do we go to another OT? Can he get off a three? Can he get one off? And he has to hit the buzzer. Bobby Hurley in his face. Porciani had to force one up. What a great effort by Corciani, Hurley, and just about everybody you can name out there tonight. And two outstanding coaches shake hands. Mike Krzyzewski in his 10th year. Jimmy Balvano in his 10th year. Mike Krzyzewski and his gang really earned the W tonight. It certainly didn't come easy here, baby. There it is right now, Corciani. The clock is going down. They can't find Monroe, and now it's a little panic time. And now he tries to go up and under. He throws it up. And the coach is absolutely, one is jubilant, the one is sad. And there's look at Valvano, he knows it's over. The lieutenant general waves to the crowd. He's no longer a colonel. He's now a lieutenant general. Duke goes to 15 and three, five and one in the conference. North Carolina State falls to 13 and five, two and three in the ACC. For Dick Vitale, this is Mike Patrick and our entire ESPN crew. Thanks for watching, back to Johnson. Thanks a lot, Mike and Dick. A very exciting game at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Duke, as you said, at 5-1 and one atop the ACC. NC State dropping to below 500 at 2-3, and three, and they started the season so well, have dropped out of the top 20 as well. A reminder, Bill Patrick will be along momentarily with sports.